What's going on YouTube? I'm Nick the Tutor, and this channel is dedicated to improving your SAT, ACT, and AP scores. Today, we're gonna to talk about a little bit of a hot button issue, which is, is the SAT scaled or is it not scaled? People ask me this question all the time. The answer is a little bit unclear. If you listen to what the College Board has to say, you will get one answer, and maybe today I'll give you a different answer, but let's get into it. So what the College Board says about the scaling or not scaling of the SAT is that it is equated. So the question is, what does equating mean? Because that's not scaling. Well, basically they take your raw score, they bring it over to your scaled score, which is out of 1600. There's not 1600 questions on the SAT, so they have to do some equating to get there. The goal of this is that a student that scores a specific score would theoretically score a similar score, if not the same score on a different SAT administration. So for example, if you take the March SAT and you get a 1300, the idea would be you would get something very close to 1300 if you didn't improve on May. Now you could get slightly worse, you could get slightly better, but assuming you learned nothing else and you didn't do any better on the exam, you should still get a 1300. That's why people say it is so hard to improve on the SAT because they look at that statistic and they take it out of context. So like, okay, well, if you take the test again, you're likely to get the same score. Well, the reason you're likely to get the same score is they're assuming that you haven't improved. If you improve, then your score can change. Now, how does equating work if the tests are different? Different, right? The, how do you equate the March SAT and then how do you equate the May SAT and get them to come out similarly? Well, basically what they do is they take into account the difficulty of the exam. So they have to figure out the difficulty of the test and then they equate the test based on the difficulty. Now, if you look at scales for SAT tests, right? If you look at the March SAT scale from years past, you look at the May SAT, whatever test scales you wanna look at, you're gonna notice that different number of questions give you the same score on different tests. For example, a 700 on math one time might be 10 wrong. The next time it might be six wrong. The next time it might be 11 wrong. That is part of the equating. But the problem is people would argue that the post-test equating that is done based on the difficulty of the exam and how people perform would be the same thing as curving the exam. Is it the traditional curve that you would get on a chemistry test where they just bring people's score up based on you know wanting to have someone that gets a perfect score or an A or a B or C? No, but there is a, a sense of a scale based on the performance of students. If everyone bombs the test, someone is going to get in the 1500s. So it's a little bit unclear. You know, I think the terminology is a little bit less useful than actually understanding how it works and how you can benefit from it. All right, so how is the SAT score, right? You have two parts out of 800. You have what they call evidence-based reading and writing, and you have math both out of 800. But to get there, there's a little bit of a complicated process. So you have the writing and language section and the reading section are the two sections that add together for the evidence-based reading and writing section. Now, both of those two sections are scored out of 40. So you get a score out of 40 on each section, then basically you multiply that by 10, and then you add them together, and that is your score out of 800. So for example, if you got every question right, you would get 40 and 40, multiply those by 10, you get 400 and 400, add those together, you have 800, which is a perfect score. That is how it's graded. So I gave you guys the example of the evidence-based reading and writing section. You're like, okay, that sounds great, but how do I use this to my advantage? This is how you do it, right? If you take an SAT and say you get three wrong on writing and language, right? That's a really amazing performance, right? You got 41 out of 44 questions correct. On one test, that could actually result in losing 50, 60, 70 points. That is a bad scale. What you wanna do if that happens to you is just take the SAT again. If you take the test again, next time you could get a good scale, get three wrong again, and then you will only lose 10, 20, 30 points, right? So you'll gain 40 points on the test with similar or the same raw score performance. Now, that's not as easy as it sounds because the test might be harder, but that's in their perception and how everyone across the country and the world is performing. Take the test multiple times. And you're making a huge mistake if you don't take the test multiple times because what you're not doing is you're not giving yourself the possibility of taking advantage of a favorable scale or a favorable you know, equating scenario, whatever you wanna call it. So at the end of the day, my advice, take the test multiple times, SAT or ACT, give it plenty of shots and you will succeed. Talk to you guys soon.